Hi and welcome back to Bill's Cichlid Room. Well today I'm going to do a species profile on one of my favourite species of fish that I've been after for quite a while. So it's the Amatelania nanolartus. So I was lucky enough to pick up a pair. It's a breeding pair and I got them at the Northwest Cichlid Group auction a couple of weeks ago. The Amatelania nanolartus was described by Algea in 1994. It was first placed in the genius Centrarchus and then it was moved in 2001 into Cryptoheros and then they had a whole revision in 2016 where it was moved into the newly created genius Amatelania. So it's endemic to Panama in the river basin of the Rio Gamero, which is on the Atlantic Slope. It's evaluated on the International Union for the Conservation of Species as uh, data deficient in 2019. It is thought to be endangered in Panama due to pollution and the, the cultivation of, uh, of crops. The name Nanolata it comes from the Latin meaning dwarf yellow in reference to the adult size being quite small compared to other Central American cichlids and obviously the bright yellow coloration. The common name for it is the yellow convict, again referring to the size and the coloration of the species. It's not an aggressive species unlike the convict and you can happily keep it in a community. Um, these ones that I've got, the, the pair, a special shout out to, to Phil who actually raised them and put them in the auction. So I picked them up from the Northwest Cichli Group auction about two weeks ago. Uh, and as I mentioned in the intro, it is a species that I've been after for a long time. Phil's actually managed to breed these and I got some youngsters off him earlier in the year, about three months ago. So I'll show a little footage of the ones that I've got left of those uh, towards the end. The adult size of the males gets to about four and a half inches with the females being a little bit smaller. They are really easy to sex. Uh, it's one of those species where the female has the spot in the dorsal. So when I first got these, I put them into the tank with the Phyrictes passionis because uh, they're not an aggressive species and there's some Congo tetras in there as well. So I thought they'd do quite well in there. But what was happening is the Phyrictes were actually keeping them penned in, so they were hiding behind the filters all the time. So I had a couple of options. I could redecorate the tank, moving everything around, therefore creating new hiding places for them. But what I decided to do, because I had this tank empty, I thought I'd put them in here by themselves for a few weeks and see whether we can actually get them to, uh, to start breeding. So... They've only been in this tank for a couple of days. Uh, it's a three foot tank. It's about 35 UK gallons, or as the Americans like to call it, a, a 40 breeder. So let's hope that, that with it being a 40 breeder that they will actually start breeding. <laughs> so what we've got in here, it's two sponge filters and the heater. The tank's heated to about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the pH is about neutral and the water, it's it's quite soft water. So I've got some of the rocks in there to actually buffer the pH, make sure that it doesn't drop very low. And I've put a plant pot in there and some rocks uh, to try and encourage them to breed. So they are a cave uh, and substrate spawner. So they've got lots of places in here that if they decide to do it, that they will actually start breeding. So you can see the female, she's actually got that black mask, uh, which goes like from in between the eyes down to the mouth. So yeah, they look in really good condition. The the well fed, they are really conditioned. So hopefully it won't be too long before they do start breeding. Yeah, so as I say, they've only been in this tank for a couple of days, so they still are getting used to it. And uh, they're hiding quite a bit at the back. Uh, I've put a little bit of flake food in for them to try and encourage them to come out. And as you can see, they're feeding well. Um, 
like in the in the aquarium they, they feed on all the normal aquarium fare so flake food pellets frozen food occasional live food all that sort of thing so yeah they are quite easy to keep so as i mentioned before uh, the crypto and the amitalania that they are me probably my most favorite species and um, with them not getting too big or too aggressive they are quite easy to keep so i actually did the presentation at the preston aquatic society earlier in the year and repeated at the norfolk cichlid group uh, meeting and um, so i actually turned the presentation uh, into a youtube video so i'll put a link to that at the end so what a cover in it it's it's up so it's all the species that are in the Cryptoheris and the Amatelania and a, a couple of other ones as well. Uh, so I've actually called the presentation Central American Cichlids of the Smaller Kind. So it's well worth a watch. There's just about every species covered in there. Um, so yeah, give it a watch and let me know what you think. Yeah, so as I say, these two, this pair, they, they are settling down really well. I mean, you can see the coloration in them the yellow is really coming through uh, they are very similar to the um to the sister species the altafluva how you tell them apart the amatelania have a lot more black patterning in them whereas the uh, the, the altafluva it's more yellow with just a, a couple of black patches in it and um, so i have got videos uh, on the playlist actually uh, species profiles i've done quite a few of them now uh, over the last year or two so yeah if you're interested in a more detailed description of some of the species that i've kept if you have a look at the playlist i'm sure there'll be one or two species there that you'll find interesting to watch so i'm sure you'll all agree uh, it is a great species to have an, in addition to uh, to the cichlid room uh, looking forward to watching them actually hopefully start breeding <laughs> uh, I've got a list of people already that are after fry of them so <laughs> so yeah hopefully I will do quite well with them and yeah, the female she does look really really good uh, the, the coloration on it's fantastic So the male just letting his presence be known. And I'm really pleased with them. As I say, like I have been after this species for quite a while. And to actually be lucky enough to uh, obtain a breeding pair, like I am really pleased with them. So yeah, thanks Phil. So as I mentioned earlier on, I did get a couple of uh, small fry uh, from Phil earlier in the year. And um, they were only about a quarter of an inch in size at the time. Um, so there they are here. Um, I've actually, I've got two of them left, which um, I'm pretty sure is a pair. So yeah, we'll, we'll watch these ones grow up as well. Um, so yeah, as I say, these are in the tank with the Phyrictes Passionis. And there's a a group of eight uh, Congo tetras in there as well. So yeah, this again, it's another three foot tank. So it's actually above the one that I've got the pair in. See, so yeah, there's the other one just above it. So yeah, that, like it, it does look like a male and a female. Uh, so as I say, they were really small when I got them, but uh, yeah, get growing fast. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of the video. Uh, I do hope to breed this species and actually make it more available in the hobby. Um, if you haven't already, please do hit the subscribe button. It does help the channel out. And I'll see you all on the next video.